I'm Mike Kojo, and this here is my beautiful Sling TSI. I spent a year building this airplane, and some of you may already know me from my flight adventures on YouTube, Mojo Grip, and I've actually been flying for a little over five years. And when it came time for me to get, either buy or build an airplane, I decided to go with the Sling TSI. And I actually documented the build because I wanted to show the entire world what the process was like. Now, what people may not understand is that one of the reasons why I went with this particular plane, which I love very much, is because of this, the engine, the Rotax 915. Now, like any other pilot, I train in the conventional uh, aircraft. You either fly or train in a Cessna or Piper. In my case, I train in the DA-40. And most of these airplanes use the old conventional engine, either it's a Lycoming or a Continental. Because unlike those engines, this airplane to me is the most modern and most efficient engine in its class. And I'll tell you why. So when you think of a Rotax 915, you've got a turbocharger, You've got dual systems in the battery and also the fuel system. And also you've got something called a FADEC. I think that in the single engine, mainly piston engine class, FADEC is not a word that you hear often. FADEC simply means you've got a computer system that manages all of the work of this engine for you. Now, those conventional engines I mentioned with the light coming or Continental, you're still managing your engine from the cockpit. I don't have that issue with this plane or with this engine. So with that FADEC, everything is computerized. My fuel calculation, uh, my propeller even, I use an AirMaster prop for this airplane and it blends perfectly with the Rotax 915. So you've got a full FADEC system that basically manages the engine for you. Also, when you think about redundancy, I mentioned you've got dual systems all over. So with this airplane, for example, I have two fuel systems, which is two fuel pumps, and I actually have a friend flying the same aircraft and he has three fuel pumps. So depending on which airplane you're flying with the Rotax 915, you can really add more redundancy if you want. But naturally you have two fuel systems that comes in and so that way if one pump goes bad you can always check the other pump also when you think about redundancy as compared to a conventional engine you've got lanes in this engine which is electronic compared to mags magnetos in a conventional engine magnetos go bad as a matter of fact i remember when i used to train to fly and I would hear basically the engine either vibrating or shaking. I had one time, I had a scare when I was doing pattern work and it was really one of the mags going bad. In this airplane, I don't think about that or particularly with this engine. My lanes are redundant because each lane has its own specific duties, but each lane can also carry the entire work of the engine. Okay, so if one goes bad, you can always fall back on the other. Obviously, if you have a problem in flight, make sure you manage everything well and declare an emergency. But every time that I get into this airplane flying behind the Rotax 915, I feel safe because of all these systems that's in place. One other thing I do want to talk about is the power because I think this is where everybody goes, man, but this thing doesn't have enough power. Guess what? So with the Rotax 915, you've got 141 horsepower full and you've got 135 continuous. What that means is on takeoff all the way to 15,000 feet, you've got 141 horsepower available to you. And then once you set back and put the airplane in cruise mode, then you get 135. Now, when you compare 140 to say 180 horsepower or 200 or 250, however much you want to compare it to, because I feel like the common knowledge out there, it's all about the horsepower. As long as you have this high number of horsepower, then you're good to go. But here's the thing, more power relative to what? I think that's a conversation that needs to be had. When I think about this engine, I don't think more horsepower or the most powerful. I think of efficiency, and I think of an engine that was designed to hit all of the marks. All of the marks in terms of your fuel burn, all of the marks in redundancy, and all of the marks in safety. Sling TSI is a perfect airplane because it's lighter, but also you've got enough power in this engine to carry it further, faster, in every way, shape, or form. And then lastly, let's talk about that turbocharger. Now, when you think of a turbo in an engine, especially this Rotax 915, for a standard pilot or everyday pilot, when you say turbo, 
it means different things. And in cars, it means something different. When you're flying, turbo really comes in handy. Now, most days, you may not need the turbocharger for this airplane or for this engine. It performs seamlessly regardless. But when you think about areas where you have high density altitude or you're flying around mountains or you get in a situation where you need to climb faster. Now again, this engine, the turbocharger in this engine will propel you all the way to 15,000 feet. That's, that's amazing. And I know this engine has gone as high as 30,000 feet. So when you're thinking also of the turbocharger, you not only think about your climb and your takeoff, but you think about your climb and your takeoff in high density altitude areas. Now when you think about it that way, you see that a turbocharger actually becomes a safety tool. Sometimes you may hear of pilots trying to take off in high density altitude areas and the airplane is underpowered. Underpowered with the 180 horsepower, 200 horsepower, but with this 140 horsepower, I have no problems taking off in high density altitude, and I've done it. The very first time I flew a Sling TSI, we flew up to Big Bear, and the density altitude was about 8,000 or 9,000 feet, and I was still doing over 1,000 feet per minute with four adults in the airplane, and that's why I vouch for this engine. As a matter of fact, I'm making this video because I just passed 100 hours flying this airplane and flying behind this engine and it's everything I could possibly want. I'm really satisfied with it. Like I said, every time I get into this airplane to go flying, I feel safe because the engine runs very smoothly and I only burn seven to eight gallons per hour. Find me an engine in the Lycoming and Continental class that can do the same thing that this engine does.